Welcome back to Story of Seasons. We're still very early in our first spring, so it's just a matter of unlocking things. Thankfully, one of them you just have to wait for. A horse! <laughs> of course. Now, I know you don't have any money or anywhere to keep it or really any knowledge of how to take care of an animal, but... <laughs> You're still wearing your Walmart name badge. <laughs> This is one of those things I like to do of throwing horses against the wall and seeing if they stick. Fact is best, I just have too many damn horses. <laughs> one. That's too many horses for me. That's entirely too many. I'm like 90. So this is the first animal that we get to name uh, using suggestions from my Patreon patrons. One of them suggested naming the horse Burrito. You guys really knocked it out of the park with that one. He's full of beans. It would only make sense if he was a small donkey. Why is this man's hand so tiny? <laughs> Look at this tiny little hand. Well, that's my beard hand. Oh, okay. Slowly being eaten by my beard. <laughs> it's vestigial. I'm reabsorbing it. <laughs> the horse is both nice and kind of... It kind of sucks because... You don't need to feed it or anything. You can just leave it alone. And like, you can talk to it every day. You can brush it to increase its affection. And you do need to do that in order to be able to keep it when it finally grows up. Because right now it's just a baby. Don't worry about pet treats. That's not going to come in for years. Um, but you need to wait 90 in-game days for it to grow up. And you can actually use it as a horse, like right around on it. And when it grows up, it has the weirdest, widest hitbox, so it actually can often get in the way. Like, you jump off of the horse and it will still be blocking you. It's kind of funky, but they, at least you don't have to worry about it too much. From what I understand, that's actually pretty accurate about horses. <laughs> get the fuck out of my way, horse. <laughs> well, the thing is, horses in real life, they're not wider than their own bodies. This horse is. <laughs> they like to think that they are, I suppose. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't know if you're Monster Hunter fans, but uh, that's what we call the old Plesioth hitbox. Its body check is infinitely wide. Defies physics. If only Bess had a spear that could launch herself in the air. Absolutely. The axe is kind of like a charge blade once you upgrade it. So here we see, we got our first two-star turnip. Oh, congratulations. I'm not going to be holding on to the higher star crops or anything. They're just worth a little bit more than the regular version. There's no seed maker in the game. Even though that feels like such an obvious thing, that I guess I decided not to also bring that back from later games. So I'm, like, I'm not going to hang on to them. It really is just, I want some extra cash. But uh, when I do get a refrigerator, I'm going to hold on to the single star crops because I like having a nice big full refrigerator. Here's a random occurrence. When you're tilling up the field, sometimes a mole will pop up and you can bash it on the head with a hammer. This serves no purpose. It's just for when you want to be a dick. Wow, that was uh, mean. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't even try to run away. He was just like, oh, how's it going? This is a pretty nice spread you got here. Yeah, I mean, like, in Animal Parade, when he did that in the mines, at least the mole would drop something. Hmm. I feel like there's something in this trough. It's a truth jewel. What? <laughs> My horse was gonna drink that. Now your now burrito is gonna tell only lies. <laughs> Horrible horsey lies. Burrito, did you leave this big steamer in the middle of the turnip patch? Nay. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, I did not. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you stop at the carpenters? He never actually lets me in. <laughs> well, he grows weed out back. I mean, sorry, Guts.
Oh, it's just you. Here, take this across the face. I have a log. Go on. Is it Sasquatches? Gods, do you see Sasquatches? I am the Sasquatch. Turns out it's just my reflection. <laughs> You know, there's a part of the brain that allows you to recognize yourself. I don't think I have that anymore. I was cutting open my chest. Hi, Jennifer. She's going to grow up to be the sunning her butthole person on Instagram, isn't she? <laughs> My Chikorita is all about it. Esoteric truths, huh? You mean lies? Show her the truth, Jewel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought she was talking about, like, knowledge of the deep ones. Mother Nature always speaking to me. <laughs> Is there an elder god under your farm? Yeah, I think that's the harvest goddess. Okay. Oh, no. Jennifer, get over yourself. What brings you to me today? <laughs> the vagarities of video game developers, apparently. Monkey! <laughs> oh, hey, little man. Aww. It's sad. In this game, you can't interact with the wild animals. It's just sometimes you'll see them out on the mountain or nearby Gotz's house, and all you can do is run up to them and scare them away. Well, yep, we're done. Balls to this piece of shit. <laughs> yep, Skippy and I are on strike now. I mean, there are animals we can get on our farm. You're going to be hearing from the monkey pig mafia. Unfortunately, there's no pig. Not doing a lot to sell me on this. <laughs> <laughs> we got the monkey, at least. I guess we got the monkey. Wow, thanks. Floor grapes. Enjoy these raw, unwashed grapes I picked up <laughs> off the ground. They even kind of have dust on them, if you look at it. Ugh. Elia, yeah, don't think that's your job. Most of the characters are pretty easy to befriend, like Marie likes grapes, those are growing automatically on your farm. Most people like some type of flower. Or just more grapes or apples or what have you. It feels like in other games, a lot of characters like crops that you grow on your farm. That's not really the case this time around. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I wouldn't be thrilled if somebody brought me a turnip. <laughs> I would. Jeez. I... If it was as big as these turnips, though. But it, if it was that big, it would be so woody. No, this is really cute. In the GBA Friends of Mineral Town, you were able to buy a basket from the grocery store, and you really needed the basket to help you efficiently take care of the farm. You could just put a bunch of items in there and then dump them all into the shipping bin. In this case, you have a bigger rucksack, so they don't include the basket, but they do have it sitting on the shelf as a callback to the GBA game. Oh, that is nice. That's the decorative basket. Can't use that one. I have no need for decoration. My soul is dead. <laughs> I was shunned by a monkey. And now I have no interest in life. And I will be shunned by more. Hmm... Hi, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. His life's kind of sad. Ha! Huh, look at that! You melted my tiny heart! 
Hooray, we've befriended our first nature sprite. So now let's play a game with them. Each of the sprites can play one of three mini games. They're all very, very basic mini games that are basically just built off of different skills. So like watering crops, it's a memory puzzle game. In this case, at the start, three different spots will shine, and so you need to guide the sprite around, have him water those specific spots. If you do it in the same order that they showed up, you get more bonus points. If you miss a spot, then you miss a point. They're incredibly easy. The more that you level up the sprites, the higher the point requirement to beat the game gets. And also the more spots get watered at one time. As an example of doing it right, but in the wrong order. If you do it in the right order, you actually see the plant pop up. Well, I despise the music for this minigame. <laughs> it gets so old. I mean, that bit where it slows down. Yeah, that really it annoys really, me. Oof, oh, it grates. Especially because one of them... That's dick. That's getting it wrong. Especially because one of the mini games is sort of a rhythm game, and following the background music is actually a really good way to finish that one. But then there's that slowdown, which completely throws it off. But there we go. Beat the score, and because of that, his watering skill went up. How much, though? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> wow. Nice pixel. But of course, you can also have him work on the farm, and as he's actively watering your crops, his skill will go up that way too. I am a capitalist drone. And we got blueberry! So we're gonna do the harvest crop minigame. This is the rhythm game. Disguising menial labor as entertainment. It's called the gamification of work. I don't need money when I'm getting points. So for this one, you need to tap. In my case, I was playing with a PS4 controller, so tap the X button sort of rhythmically. I've got it sort of tapping alongside the rhythm of the music. And that's like just enough speed to not stress out the nature sprite and have him screw up. The way he screws up, if you do it too fast, gonna, I think I'm going to try to do it here. Yeah. He gets sweaty, and then he falls on his ass. <laughs> and you try picking a turnip bigger than you. But if you follow the rhythm of the music, you should be guaranteed to get, like, nine points every time. And they do not require you to get many points. Right at the start, you only need to get two to pass. If you can go right under, like, just as the sweat starts showing up, you might be able to get up to 10. I rarely can, though. I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah, I'm what you might call the enforcer. I'm what you might call violent. I'm really just in it to bust face. So you can have the nature sprites do one of those three chores for either one day, three days, or seven days. It feels like having them do it for seven days is the go-to idea, but what I actually like to do is have about half, like there's seven of them, you can't divide it up evenly, but have three or four of them watering for seven days and have the others watering for three days and actually stagger them. Because if you have all of them going at the exact same time, that means they're going to stop working at the exact same time. And there's always a day after they finish their work where they have to go back to the house and nobody's working on the farm. So if you stagger it, there's always somebody helping you out on the farm. <laughs> Congratulations, you've invented shift work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So which of the sprites are we giving third shift? Uh, it, it's going to be like four or five shifts. I'm not going to be able to befriend them all at the exact same time.
I think Sunny in particular ends up being a real dick this playthrough. Ironic. So yeah, you need to get him up to three notes. Three happy notes. You are just failing to win him over. Yeah, but thankfully, because it's simple mode, I am befriending them faster than I would normally. Befriending sprites at an unprecedented rate. <laughs> Sure, Jennifer. Carter is the strange one. Right. I mean, she's not wrong. Carter is kind of a weirdo. She She's not good by default, though. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, ah, yeah, the fucking energy of the universe. Oh, chakras. Mmm, chocolates. Ah. Now that's a faith I can get behind. Chocolates of the universe. That's right coursing through our veins. I will become one with the snacks. I must align my chocolates <laughs> and then eat them. All right, getting some of our classic turnips that I have to actually grow. They're not just going to grow for me. Mm, classic turnip. And also I bought a bag of cucumbers. Like Cherry pointed out regarding the kappa, uh, cucumbers are pretty important in the first spring. Hooray! <laughs> I, love, I love how sudden that is. <laughs> Hi, Zach. You'll notice I left the razor in there. Just saying. <laughs> oh yeah, my sideburns. I need to clean those up. <sighs> so, um, turnips, cabbages, and potatoes, those are single harvest crops. Once they're grown, you pull them out of the ground, that said, you need to plant more seeds. Cucumbers are our first crop that regenerate. Once you've done a harvest, they'll go back to like stage two or three. Then you need to keep watering them, then eventually you'll be able to get more cucumbers. And this is really handy because you need that in order to get more cash, one. But two, in the lake, the kappa is actually there. And if you give him enough cucumbers over time, he'll give you a gift, a very useful gift. Is it somebody's butt soul? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's read quite on. This is a nice thing about the mines. When you leave and go out, the whole floor resets so you can keep going. I mean, floor one, you're only going to get copper and junk ore, which isn't going to do much. But it's right nearby the hot spring, so you can just hop in, regenerate all your health and fatigue, and then go back in. It's not going to give you much, but it's a way to get a little bit of money. And also, you need a piece of copper in order to level up your tools the first time. And also, copper makes a good gift for Gray and Saibara. But here you can see the extent you can really go to push yourself. Once it gets to dizziness, that's the last stage. If you mess up, then the day is going to end. Jesus. So, uh, why don't we do a safety save and just see what that looks like? Yeah, I'm gonna work myself to death. Thinking you can do it ten more times, and then that's it. Ooh. Ooh, face plant. I did feel tired and rested. It was just on my face in the mines. So the only cost for doing that, you go to the next day. However, there is a way to royally screw up. If you end up passing out after midnight, you end up losing two days. <laughs> so don't do that. This show is a riveting tale of reading a letter. <gasps> I'm 
on the edge of my seat. It's only because I'm slouching real bad. <laughs> I think I would have been able to get this yesterday. So the... Actually, I'm not sure. Well, it's Thursday anyway, so the Sybaris Forge is closed. <laughs> but, um... It feels like when somebody sends you a letter saying there's now something available, it feels like it was available the day before, it's just you need to actually sleep before it registers in-game that the letter needs to be sent. So I might have been able to go there yesterday. Keep running, horse. <laughs> you can stop after today. Yeah. That's okay. Say it, it's going to rain tomorrow and you don't need him watering. Make him water in the rain. It's good for him. <laughs> Built a character. So with the sprites, when they're on the farm, it's actually really easy to maintain your friendship with them. You would think you could just leave them and they'll do their work, and they will but their friendship, those musical notes, those will start ticking down. But if you keep talking to them and giving them gifts, the friendship will keep going up and eventually you can max it out. And by that point, you just need to talk to them every day and they'll stay best friends with you and you don't need to worry about them anymore. Dudley, your eyelashes are amazing, dude. Looks like a man named Dudley. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look at those long, curly lashes. He just threw the chicken at me and said, catch. <laughs> If you weren't pleased with it, I was going to break it again. His hand's missing. Thanks for poking it. I did my part. I'm racking my brain trying to think of what kind of tool Marie needed uh, repairing. The librarian, yeah. It's a book stand. Stapler, maybe. Sledgehammer. Nah. Yeah, I thought you fixed the bindings. Hands off, pal. <laughs> Yeah, Gray has a crush on Marie. Unfortunately, for those of you who liked getting the rivals together, that got taken out of the game. You only get one rival cutscene, and that's it. So we don't get to thrust his head into that pile of glowing coals. <laughs> nope, we gotta tolerate it. Oh, God. He's just gonna continually maim himself. Uh, Gray, Marie's not here. I'm hoping it'll summon her. Uh, I'm fine. Just maybe she'll kiss my boo boo. You mean your stump? Yeah. It's it's spurt. That's arterial spray. <laughs> <laughs> Gray, maybe I should get doctor. Let's get some potatoes in there. A little more expensive, sell for a little bit more. But also take a little longer to grow. 
so nice of the game to just send stuff to your house. Yeah, we got Cherry in here. I'm not going to worry too much about his livestock level. At least not for now. But I am going to use him to show off the livestock minigame. This one is a little weird. So you put feed into the feed bins. And then the chickens will very quickly devour the food. They'll get antsy, and if you don't immediately put more food in there, they'll run away and you'll start losing points. However, it is incredibly easy to cheese this minigame. Ten points, I'm gonna obliterate that. So they start getting antsy, then they run away screaming. Every time you've successfully put down food and they start eating, you get a point that way. So this is what it's like trying to feed all of them and trying to keep all of them happy. The key to this mini game is letting two of them leave and ignoring them. Because you're not gonna keep losing points if you do this. It's very easy, your points are just going to skyrocket. And this is assuming you want to get a lot of points and not just beat the minigame. Because there is a way to do it even easier. It's not like you get more stack growth, the better you do. So there we go. And if you want to do it even easier, narrow it down to three early on to get up to at least 10 points, and then just focus on feeding one single chicken. <laughs> See, look at that. 57 points. I think you won. Yeah. You'll be a little better at taking care of, like, two-thirds of a livestock. Two-thirds of a chicken. Yes. I am actually going to require him to look after the livestock in summer for a certain reason. Uh, the first cow you get is allergic to you. <laughs> yeah, not vice versa. The chicken's allergic to me. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Day. Everybody get a watering. At the start of the season, just have all the sprites watering. But once you get to the second half, you're going to have the field full of crops and what have you. Especially the regenerating ones like the cucumbers. So at that point, you're going to want to have a couple of sprites focused on harvesting instead. And also, hopefully by that point, you'll have leveled up the watering can a bit more, so you can do a bit more watering yourself. It's a balancing act. Hmm. Oh boy. Very early on, you're going to find yourself in just a bunch of random cutscenes. Most of these are because the various bachelors and bachelorettes have two black heart cutscenes. They're usually really easy to access. You just come across them randomly. So in this case, this is one of Brandon's Blackheart cutscenes. And it's just Sasha and Mana drooling over him. And yet also being shitty to him. For his sculptures of chickens? <laughs> One. Oof.
Don't know if I'd call him a gentleman. I hear he paints by throwing fish at office paper. <laughs> wow. Is that painting or just frustration from working in an office? Uh, depends on how much you sell it for. Oh, world fashion. That doesn't matter. And they immediately forget about Brandon. Well, that was riveting. Oh, it's not done yet. Some of these cutscenes can drag. Oh, God, another one. Well, there's a cloud coming in. One single storm cloud. Oh, God. I just, I want to wedgie this guy. <laughs> I want to get plumb to wedgie this guy. Run him up the flagpole by his underwear. <laughs> All right, heave ho, boys. Get struck by lightning. Oh, God, this guy is just the worst. Oh, you pretentious prick. Get back to your fucking carpenter shop. Both Brandon and Jennifer are just agonizingly dull. Oh, I, I want to throw them both into the lake and let the Kappa have them. Meet cucumbers. <laughs> Here, hold this. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, at least we've got a horse. Yeah. I mean, I'm here, Mana. To be honest, the little gremlin versions of all the characters don't look that different from each other. Hmm. Mana has one joke, and it gets old. Hmm. <laughs> No Brandon here, he got swallowed by the ocean. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> there was much rejoicing. Hey, have this bamboo. Uh, yeah, you don't get anything. <laughs> Now, what I try to do when I get more crops on the field is have them roughly nearby each other. Like, have the cucumbers sort of in the same plots, have the turnips and what have you in the same plots, but as the season goes on and plots start opening up, like I've harvested all the turnips, it gets really messy and only the recurring crops actually stay where I want them to be. potatoes in the ground and when they're ready plow them all up and you get to play my favorite game potato or rock <laughs> if you win you get a potato if you lose you get dental surgery <laughs> look at him go not done for the day boss time to just shuffle my little buns they leave at exactly 6pm every day good time to clock out yeah we don't pay overtime. 
or at all. I pay him in honey. Isn't friendship the real form of currency? <laughs> I mean, in Harvest Moon, kinda. Or Story of Seasons. Nighttime's a good time to clear out the field, because you probably don't have anything else to do. Uh, that really brings me back to the classic Boca Joes. Uh, working yourself to death, and then sitting in the hot spring. Well, working myself to death, clearing out an incredibly junk-covered farm. Ah, uh, yes. Let me quickly see what happens. I mean, the next one is called Fishing and Drugs, so really, it's got something for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's spring. It's a process of steadily opening up the different mechanics of the game. So next time, we'll be able to do fishing. And uh, the drugs are something else entirely. They usually are. Yeah. Woo! Fishing's more of a beer activity. Sure is. Or heroin. 